video introduces you to algorithmic thinking. Before you create something, it's best to make a plan. Think about building this beautiful sandcastle. How would you create this elaborate structure? You would need to build the castle one part at a time, completing each part using carefully orchestrated steps. Believe it or not, this type of planning is an example of algorithmic thinking. Algorithmic thinking is the process of completing a task using a series of clearly defined steps. In computer science, algorithmic thinking is used to solve problems in computing. For example, think about all the features of a mobile app. Each one of those features requires careful thought using clearly defined steps to create it. Even simple apps can have hundreds of steps to make them function correctly. Computer scientists work with customers or clients who will purchase the program, app, or device they design. Often the client is not familiar with the computer software used to create the product, so the computer scientist uses an algorithm to plan out the tasks required. An algorithm is a set of instructions used to carry out a task. Computer scientists write their algorithms using a simple, natural language, like English, so it's easier for their clients to understand. To computer scientists, creating algorithms is like when an architect creates a blueprint or when a doctor documents your medical history. Algorithms are used in many fields, such as science, engineering, arts, sports, and of course, math. Now there are several types of algorithms. For this video, we're going to explore linear algorithms. A linear algorithm has only one sequence of steps. So how do you write a linear algorithm? We'll use algorithmic thinking to work through an example together. First, we need to identify a task to complete. Let's write an algorithm to plan a birthday party for your best friend. Take a moment to think about what you need to do to plan a party. You'll need to purchase party decorations and put them up. So that means you'll have to clean up after the party. You'll need to decide where to host the party, send invitations to the guests, then throw the party and have fun. Oh, don't forget about the food. You'll have to purchase the food and birthday cake and choose the date for the party. Wow, quite a few steps go into a birthday party, don't they? Now that we have the steps, let's put them in the correct order. How would you organize this algorithm so you can plan an awesome party for your friend? One way to organize an algorithm is to use a step-by-step -step list, similar to a recipe. Each step clearly details what is needed to complete the task and is in the correct order in the list. So let's put the birthday party planning steps in order. Step one, choose the date to have the party. Step two, decide where to host the party. Step three, send invitations to the guests. Step four, order the food and cake. Step five, purchase the party decorations. Step six, set up the food and decorations. Step seven, throw the party and have fun. And step eight, clean up after the party. Now that the steps are organized, you can see how easy it would be for someone else to follow the directions and plan the party. This written list is just one way you can organize an algorithm. Another way is using a flowchart. A flowchart is a diagram that represents an algorithm using shapes and arrows. The arrows point to the next step in the process from start to finish. The flowchart is a great visual to understand linear algorithms. Notice that the sequence of steps for the party flow in a straight line. It's a linear flow. Similar to our party planning example, computer scientists create linear algorithms to instruct computers and devices to perform various tasks in a certain order. Now that you've learned about algorithmic thinking, you're ready to get started with creating your own algorithms.